Okay, class. Well, it is a new unit on interactive whiteboards. And first, I wanted to introduce the assignment that is due on October 28th to end out this unit next week. So it's due by the end of next week, but you can take a look at it now, of course, and start working on it. For this project, you're going to choose an existing lesson plan that you have created and or taught to your students. This lesson should be one that you feel hasn't gone as well as it could have in the past and needs some enhancement. So in other words, don't choose one of your best lessons that just works so great for your students to update for this um, assignment. Instead, choose one that maybe has fallen flat a little bit. Maybe it could be use some of that upgrading. It, maybe it's one of those lessons that you've taught before and thought, well, I could probably do some updating for that lesson and make it more interesting. Also choose a lesson plan that does not already have perhaps a interactive whiteboard activity as part of it. Your job then with this lesson is to add some interactive whiteboard activities that support active learning and engagement among your students. And so that's what you're going to do to the lesson. You're kind of going to redesign it as we've done in past assignments. So you're going to submit three items as part of this assignment. You're going to submit the, the original unchanged lesson plan that uh, didn't go so well, um, the interactive whiteboard file that was created and for this new lesson, that was created for this new lesson, it should say. This should be at least five pages or slides. And the updated lesson plan that now includes the use of interactive whiteboard, including a lesson title and summary, content standards and objectives, description of learners, list of materials and technologies, list of learning activities that would be completed during the lesson with a detailed description of each activity, and a description of how active learning and engagement is supported in the lesson, and then an assessment plan that shows how you would measure student learning. So that's uh, the assignment, really. This is how you'll be graded is, uh, you know, looking at did you include the original lesson plan? And again, some people have asked about that before. It could just be a paragraph summary of what you did in the past. You might not have like a full lesson plan, you know, with pages and pages of information. Instead, you might just have a paragraph or two saying, this is what we're doing today, pages, whatever, to whatever. Um, that's fine. But include the original plan that you had used before. And then include the interactive whiteboard file, and then it looks for these elements from the lesson, from the new lesson plan that will use the interactive whiteboard file, or that would use the interactive whiteboard file. Uh, let's see, adaptations. If you are not currently a classroom teacher, then uh, you may not have an existing lesson plan that you have created or taught to your students. And so you might find an existing lesson plan from someone else to update yourself, but you'll do the work yourself of updating that lesson plan to be to use these interactive whiteboard tools. Or you might have a previous lesson plan that you created for another class that you could update for this um, assignment as well. But notice too that there's not a requirement necessarily to actually implement this lesson plan with a group of students. You could, of course, do that if you're a teacher and want to try it out. Obviously, that's the intent if you would like to try it out, and hopefully you get a chance to if you are a classroom teacher. But that's not part of the assignment necessarily. It's just um, giving me the updated lesson plan and the interactive whiteboard file that you have created. And that interactive whiteboard file should be of your own make. So um, it, you probably shouldn't download and adapt somebody else's um, interactive whiteboard file. But that just shows me that, again, you can still create things with interactive whiteboard um, software and adapt your lessons to use this technology. So that is what is going on for this unit. That's what we're moving toward. But if we go to this week's activities, we have readings. And you're going to read about creative ways to use your interactive whiteboard. There are some good suggestions there. Interactive whiteboard produce small gains in elementary students' self-reported motivation in mathematics, which is a research report that tells us about some of these things. Um, so you'll read about some of these um, interactive whiteboard readings for everyone. And remember when. Uh, Let's see. Oh, I'm going to have to find the full text of that one. Anyway, um, you, so you'll look at that. You'll look at. Um, I'll have to again. I'll have to make sure that this full text is working. So you'll look at those different 
sources. If it do, if I don't end up getting the full the full link to that, I can find a better link probably to that one. So you can read the research study. And then for graduate students, the interactive whiteboard, a transitional technology supporting diverse teaching practices. So again, these are just some nice articles about interactive whiteboard practices and, and um, research reports. Now remember, there's a reading pin, right? There's the Pinterest reading pin that you're going to do for your every reading assignment each week. Um, but that's different than a discussion. And I think one thing that's been confusing people is that we have both a reading pin and a discussion each week. So the reading pin um, for graduate students is that you pin once and you also comment once. That's it. That's the requirement. And for undergraduate students, you just pin. You don't have to comment. Um, so that's the reading assignment. So whenever you do a reading, that's just pin once and then comment on someone else's once. That's it. For discussions, they'll have various assignments, but usually it means to post once and then respond to at least two other students' posts on the discussions themselves. But this week's discussion is going to be a little bit different. You have a class flow creation that you'll create instead. And there aren't really any comments. It just says post to share your shared link to your class flow lesson. Oh yeah, and then also comment on another student's class flow lesson using the comments button in Google Docs by the end of the week. So there is the one comment this time. But uh, the requirement for the discussion this week is going to be different. You're going to actually, it's more like an assignment, you're going to actually create a class flow creation, a lesson plan or something else in class flow. And class flow is a new piece of software. And I definitely think that teachers should know about class flow. And that's obviously why I'm having you do this. There's a video that you can click on and you can watch the video. It says at about 11.14, it starts sharing how to create your own as required for this discussion. And then you're going to create your own sample lesson of two to three pages in ClassFlow and share it in the Google Doc here. And so right here, we already have an example up there. And you're going to put your name, the lesson link, so that people can access it, and then comments on it. Answer some of the questions in this column. How long did it take? What were some difficulties you ran into? What are some features of ClassFlow that you like? So that's the discussion this week, but I have skipped over one thing, and that is just reading and watching interactive whiteboard software tutorials. And this is from my textbook that has been adopted by other universities as well as my own classes. Um, supporting active student-centered learning has a bunch of activities that you can create with Smart Notebook as well. And if you click on any of these links, it will bring up a video that you can watch and learn how to create these objects and these different interactive items in smart notebook software or active inspire i think there's a few active inspire examples too but we'll talk about active inspire in a second um, because it's it's phasing out active inspire is finally there's the tech talk videos and we have some great ones about kahoot and then about j touch boards from megan and tad so take a look at those as well. You'll learn about new tools through those, and maybe those tools can be incorporated in your own toolbox for teaching and learning. So that's what we have for this week. Now I'm going to add another video that's a little bit about class flow and why that's important. So be sure to watch that as well.